Hello and welcome to On the Right Track Career Stories, a video series and podcast about real people, their real careers, and real lives. I'm Jane Christoffi, your host, and today I'm talking to Eddie O'Toole. He's a detective constable and he's got great stories to share with us today. Hi, Eddie. How are you today? Good. How are you doing today, Jane? Very well. And why don't we get right off and have you tell us what you do for a living? Okay, currently I'm a detective constable uh, with the Toronto Police Service. Um, I've been on the police services for, I'm in my 13th year now, uh, and I love it. Okay, that's great. Now, what does your work involve? Um, Right now, so I'm in the major crime unit. So it's basically, we take care of uh, the street crime. Um, We do a lot of, uh, so we don't answer normal radio calls in a car. A normal scout car we call that that's our police car um we have basically undercover cars just unmarked cars we'll say that's what we drive around so we answer to all the you know street robberies we do bank robberies uh drugs guns um stuff like that and more of the major crimes a lot of break and enters that we do uh, for houses and businesses in the area is your work stressful not really it, it can be, of course, it can be at times, um, and I I believe it's just on how you deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody deals with stress in different ways. Um, you you got to just learn how to deal with things because things are going to get crazy, things are going to get hectic. You're going to see things you don't want to see that normal people don't see. Um, so you got to learn how to deal with your stress and and not basically not take it personal. That's a big thing for me. You can't take what happens out there personally and take it home with you. Mm-hmm. What does a week of work look like for you? Well, right now I'm on a great schedule. <laughs> um, I'm on all, it's called the eight and six is what you know. So I work eight days in a row and then I'm off for six days in a row. So it's pretty good. So basically I work Thursday to Thursday and then I'm off until the next Thursday. Mm-hmm. So it's not bad. Um, you know, uh, because of the unit I'm in now, um, it's straight. I don't work midnights. Uh, I, I start around 1 or 2 p.m. So it, it, every week fluctuates. It's different. Usually it's a 10-hour shift, but there's a lot of days where I'm working 14 up to 18 hours usually, sometimes 24. Very rare, but it can get to that. Now, is your work social? You're obviously working with the people in your community for them, but do you have colleagues with whom you spend your time during the day? Yeah, there are a couple out there. We try, that's one thing about policing. Um, I have, as we all have our own friends growing up and, you know, me involved with sports and stuff like that, and coaching hockey and lacrosse and stuff like that. I have outside friends. I think keeping outside friends is very important to surviving Mm -hmm. a police uh, environment because if you just work with people every day, and then you hang out with them when you're off. It, it just, all you guys do is talk about police things and it becomes a police world kind of. And it, I don't think it's healthy, mm-hmm. but do I, I have great relationships with the people I work with. We talk on the phone, we do things. Do we occasionally go out, you know, have a bite to eat or do something? Of course we do. But I don't strictly just hang out with, with my police friends, we'll say. Um, we do build great relationships, but I still make sure I maintain my other relationships on the side. So when you're answering a call, are you a by yourself? Um, it, you can. So I, as when I, when I was on the road, which means you answer to basically you're driving up like a regular police car you see out there. Um, you answer to all the calls, the people that are calling in. So 911 calls, they can an- be anything from, you know, a theft under uh, from a store. It could be an argument between, you know, a husband and wife. Uh, it could be a, up to, you know, shootings and murder. So you're answering those calls. And when you're on the road, you're usually first to those calls. So that, in that aspect, you know, it's different every day. And that's one reason why I love it. And and when they say it's a full moon out there, it's true. When there's a full moon, we are very busy. Isn't that interesting? (laughs) Oh my God. That's how you got into the police services. Well, Interesting. I've always been kind of interested growing up. Um, I was a very, very sports minded. I played hockey uh, when I went to university. That's what I went for. Basically at first, my, in my mind as an 18 year old, 
I'm just going there to play hockey. I'm not going there for school. Quickly realized I still have to do my schoolwork. So, you know, I, I was always, I, I played hockey in the States and everything like that. So to me, it was always on my mind, but it was kind of on the back burner. I went to university, I came out, I worked various, uh, more sales and marketing. That's uh, what I was into. When I was a kid, I was a little bit of a rambunctious kid, you know, nothing criminal or nothing like that. And it's just, you know, I had my fun in high school and, you know, we did our things like a normal teenager did. Um, but, uh, you know, as you grow up and you realize what's important in life, I, I got married, I had kids and I, I just see my friends. I had friends that were police officers and, and seeing what they were doing with the community and how they liked it, how they talked about it. And then I had my own kids and realized um, job, it's more of a job security thing. And when I was in the field, you know, with sales and marketing, I see people getting laid off, companies not doing well. And, you know, you're, it's not a secure job for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Being this officer basically is a secure job for the rest of your life. And that's one big reason why I did get into it and uh, very glad I did. Mm-hmm. How Okay, so you did a degree at university. You were playing hockey at the same time. You started sales and marketing work, and then you transitioned into police services. How did you get the training for that? What's involved? I guess univer- they like university. Um, one big thing is volunteer work. Mm-hmm. So if always since I was smaller, did volunteer work. I was, uh, when I was in my twenties, I joined big brothers, big sisters. Mm-hmm. And I was paired up with this little kid named Jay. I've always done that. So, and that came from my mom because my mom was a huge influence on me for helping others. So that's a huge thing with the police force. They really look at the volunteer work. They love people that are involved in their community. You have your job, but once a week I say at the food bank, Anything like that really helps you, you know, get hired. They really love seeing you involved in the community. Do you have to go back to school? No, they like, they'd like to see, okay, so how we, they like to see that you've went to university. That's a big thing right now. Yeah. So when you hired as a police officer, you do go back to school, but that is now a police, it's called basically police college. Mm-hmm. So what happened with Toronto, I went for six weeks at our local Toronto Police College, which is in Etobicoke. Once I get my beginning training there, they send you off for three months. So we go to Elmer, Ontario, which is not that bad. It's just over an hour, an hour and a half away. It's an hour to an hour and a half. So you live there between, you know, so my week would go, we'll say I would drive up there Sunday night and you would have class for Monday to Friday. So you'd go to school on Friday, you live there, you have your own little room, they feed you. And then you come home right after class on Friday, you spend every weekend home. Okay, Some are people, you paid during this time? Or like, is this, yes, you, or is it work? You are paid. Okay. Um, you have to pay for the college. Mm-hmm. And it was $7,500. That's out of your pocket. But you are getting paid also from the Toronto Police Service at that time. Because you are hired before you go as a cadet. Uh, you're basically like a rookie. Um, so you do get cadet and training pay. Um and then you're there for three months. You come back for another six weeks at Toronto and then you graduate and you're on the road. So they teach you everything that they need to teach you. And it can, it goes from, you know, all the laws, the highway traffic act for driving all the criminal code acts, uh, CDSA, which is the Canada drug act. And then they teach you basic, like, like high school, like gym class, let's say gym class. So you have gym class every day where you run every day, physical activity, and you learn basically the techniques in case you're involved in an incident. So um, they teach you how to basically survive, which can imagine one-on-one fighting with people, people, you know, holding rubber knives and stuff like that. And you have to interact with them. So it's really good training to help you get prepared for the road. Because when you're on the road, sometimes, like you said before, you are by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you're not by yourself, they send two people, if you're by yourself in the car, the second car might get there a minute after you, right. let's say. So you're by yourself for a minute. And if it's a high, very high heated situation, you could be involved by yourself. So you need to be prepared to handle that situation, whether it's wait for backup, interacting right away because you have to because of the situation. So then you have all your options. Like we carry a baton, pepper spray, um, then we go up higher, uh, to a taser and then obviously higher our, our gun. So 
we carry all those options with us mm -hmm. uh, just in case we need them. Now, what would you say your favorite part of your work is? Oh, well, as the people that know me, they know I like to talk a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't shut up. So my favorite part is really the community. Mm -hmm. It's not all bad. People think it's bad and it's bad being a cop and it's bad being this. And we take a lot of heat. And yes, we do. And you've got to learn to live with that. It's part of the job. We, we are, we're, we're in Canada. We're not in the States. And a lot of people take what happens in the States and they put it on us in Canada. And we're nowhere near like that. Um, do we still have some problems within the police force? I think, of course we do. We have, we need, we have room to grow, but I think in every profession, no matter what you do, you're going to find people that either are racist or, or in some part, something. Um, so yeah, we do have some, uh, you know, we talk about it all the time. We get constant training just so people know you get constant training throughout. Um, there's courses you can take. It's all paid for by the Toronto police. We have our police college. Um, there's courses I take all the time. So if I'm scheduled to work a day, I'm saying, you know, I'm not coming into work. I took a course instead and I go to the police college and take a course. So there's constant professional development and, and that's, that's yes. great lifelong learning. Now, what would you say um, surprised you the most about being in police services? Surprised me. I guess just, just the calls, I think, weren't some... You think as a as an outsider, okay, you deal with this, you deal with that, but you don't really know what you deal with until you're actually a police officer and what you see on the street every day. Yeah. Um, I worked downtown for you know almost 13 years, and I <laughs> my eyes were opened, you know, and I've dealt with, you know, you deal with the homeless, you deal with uh, a lot of the drug addicts on the street, you deal with a lot of the good people too. You know that are trying to help you help clean up the community. Um, to me, I made it a mission. To me, when I was downtown, I got to know everybody. That's what I like to do. Like I said, I like to talk. So I knew all the homeless people, and then you help them out here or there. And you just because everybody has a different story. So I made it a mission to get to know all these people and to, to really see what's going on out there. And I think just by that has opened my eyes and surprised me of what really goes on in the world and and how everybody is treated out there. Now, can you tell us what are the most important skills for students who are considering your work, your line of work? What skills do you recommend they really focus on developing? Um, I would say just people skills, um, you know, just knowing how to talk to people is really big because you are dealing with the community and the community is relying on you. You think about it, you know, it because you are basically a psychiatrist when you go to most of these calls, people yeah. look at you and they're like, solve my problem. Whether it's an argument between him and his wife, it's like, well, he's, he's doing this and he's doing that, or she's doing this and they want you to solve their problem. So you have to know how to talk to people and how to get along with people. Yeah. And go in there just with attitude and stuff like that. So attitude, get rid of it. If you have it <laughs> quickly, because you, it's like anything you get farther, you get a lot further with people by being nice to people and knowing how to talk to them. I feel. Um, I think a second language is, uh, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Because of the diversity we have in our city, um, police officers with second languages, they look for all the time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, some people I know that speak two or three different languages, but just speaking, you can be Portuguese, uh, you know, Mandarin, Chinese, there's so many things. It, it helps you so much um, get in over the next guy, we'll say, that just only speaks English because we are looking for those people. University, volunteer work uh, are huge. And of course, is, 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 is university a required piece? It's not a required, but it's, it's, they are, most everybody hiring now has taken university, yes. They'd rather see, see a huge thing now, what they used to do back in the day, they hire a lot of young people as cadets, 18, 19, 20 soon to realize that, hey, maybe this is not the best idea because we want people with life experience. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. People let us know a lot. Went to university, held jobs. You know, they know what it's like out there to deal with people and, and basically live life. And when you're 18, 19 years old, you haven't lived yet. Mm -hmm. You're getting up to 28, 29. That's a great age, I think, that you've, you've matured. You've 
you know how to deal with people. And uh, I, I think that's more the category they look. But I have seen them hire people that are in their, you know, 22, 23 lately. Everybody matures differently and everybody's different. Yeah. But for me, I would say university, uh, second language is great, uh, volunteer work. Yeah. And I think the first thing is uh, stay out of trouble. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Eddie, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, I don't know. Because I knew listen. you. I knew you. Maybe, maybe listen more to my parents. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, like, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, they never had to come and pick me up at a police station or anything. So that was good. But, you know, we had some fun when we were kids and a little wild. But you know what? Um, as I grew older and matured, and, and I just made sure that, I don't know, I would just say, from I would say probably. Standpoint, from a career standpoint, what would you tell your younger self about how your life um, unfolds? I probably would have, would have liked to have realized what I did at an earlier stage. Mm -hmm. So I got up when I was late as a police officer when I was 37. So if I had to tell my younger self, listen, be mature, do this, do that, become a police officer when you're 24 or 25, I would be retired already by now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even I'll be working. I'd be retired. You know, you put 25, 30 years in and you're, you're set for life. So it, it, that's what I think I just would have guided myself a little more on, you know, on doing things, steps towards being a police officer, maybe, you know, knocking myself in the head a few times to say, hey, you need to mature a little quicker. <laughs> so, something like that. Okay, so um, Eddie, you've given us such interesting stories today and lots of tips for young people. Um, last question. What would you be doing today if you weren't a detective constable? Oh, good question. I'd probably still be in sales and marketing. I did have my own store. I had a health and nutrition store, mm -hmm. um, but I was spending 70, 80 week, 70, 80 hours a week there. So it was crazy. Um, I probably, I don't know. I, I don't know. Sales marketing, maybe laid off, maybe working from home. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but I'm, but you found something that you love. Yes. If I do it all over again, I would have done it earlier. Oh, it's because okay. you love it. So it's, it's what you put into it and how your attitude is. And I just, I love it. So it's all great. Right. Thank you so much for sharing your stories today, Eddie. It's really nice to well, catch up. thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you for joining us today. If you liked what you saw, give us a like. And even better, subscribe. Hope to see you soon.